You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. Premiering today, the third concert in the Gwen Sector Creative Living Center's Imperfect Harmony series, featuring violists Marie-Élise Badeau and Élise Lavallée. The concert explores French music and music with a French connection. And to tell us more about the program, the pair have joined me. Hello. Hey. Hello. Well, um, I'm so glad that you've, you've both joined us for this conversation. And um, there's all sorts of connections in this concert. Two Quebecois violists from the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra exploring French music. Lots to unpack here. And uh, Elise, I'd like to start with you. This to me sounds like a rather unique experience. Two violists in concert together. That, that doesn't happen every day, does it? <laughs> No, exactly. Actually, I was just so happy when Marie-Elise joined us at the WSO in the section. I think it was three or four years ago. Um, she, she can say how long it was. And uh, I think we had a really good connection right away. And she is, uh, I would say, from a different generation than me, uh, just coming out of school now. So it was really nice to have that um, camaraderie also about uh, viola. We're both uh, two viola nerds or viola geeks. So uh, we exchange a lot about <laughs> viola playing and what we like and stuff like that. So I would say it kind of came naturally to, um, to play together. So let, let me ask you, what changes when there's two violists to perform together? I mean, we've had you on before as part of the Lavalet Bouzache duo with another WSO colleague, viol violinist Jeremy Bouzache, but this isn't violin and viola or viola and piano. What changes when it's viola and viola? Well, it's so cool. It really feels like a, a sister instrument. Uh, you know, we have the same timber and the same register uh the same kind of sound so it's really interesting to blend uh you know to blend with the violin is something and you often have the supportive role uh not so much in our duos you know it was it was well shared like the the solo part but with a viola we stay in that super mellow nice rich register more of the the human voice too and we just stay in there with with the singing um that's something that I loved and I loved exploring right away. I said, oh, I love playing with you. Like, it's so much fun to, to be in that register. Yeah, richness is the word that came to mind. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you used that as well. Um, Marie-Elise, uh, let me start by welcoming you to Classic 107. I don't think we've had you on before, have we? No, that's the first time. Well, I'm so glad that you're here. And I, I wonder if you could tell us just a little bit more about yourself. I mean, we just heard uh, Elise mention your path a little bit to the WSO coming three, four years ago. Tell us about, you know, your musical background and how you ended up at, at the WSO. Yeah, um, so I'm actually from the same city as Elise. I'm from Quebec City, too. Um, and then I studied in the States and I was working in the States for a while. Um, then there was an audition. I, I think it was... I think it's now four years, you know, that pandemic is kind of <laughs> weird. It, it feels like 20, you know, 20 years, <laughs> but it's only been four years, I think now. Uh, and then, yeah, I won the audition and I moved here and I, yeah, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed being able to, uh, you know, speak French on an everyday basis and English too, because that's something that you don't really do in Quebec. Uh, my family doesn't speak English and yeah and being able to speak my own language every day uh, at the orchestra to at ease, but there's a lot of French speakers. Yeah, there, there most certainly That's are. Well. And I, even the French speaking yeah. community here, here in Manitoba, mm -hmm. of course. So it sounds like it's a perfect fit. And can you tell us a little bit more about that, that connection with Elise? It must've been very immediate, right? Yeah, I mean, we're both, uh, we both studied at the same place in Quebec and actually same Cégep even, like St. Lawrence. Oh, wow, yeah. And it's just like a few years apart. <laughs> but and actually, uh, when she came here, I didn't know, but I first got an email from a friend, a common friend that we have. I didn't know Marie-Elise. And it said, uh, this woman is coming to audition and she would like to have her viola, um, not tuned, but... Um, yeah you know, adjusted. So it, it's, it sounds good. Uh, she's coming, whatever, next week. So they sent it to me. So I replied to her and I saw that we sort of had the same name too. So that was kind of cool. And just from those little, uh, you know, emails and I told her where to go, I thought, oh, this is kind of fun. And then of course, at the end of the audition, I, I saw that it was her and 
we had already uh, emailed each other. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so the, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak, and I'm, I'm speaking with two Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra violists who are performing in the Imperfect Harmony concert series. Um, now, Marie-Elise, let me uh, come back to you. I, I, I'm curious, um, this, a, a concert that explores French music and music with a French connection, a very um, diverse program, though. There's operatic selections, Bizet's Carmen and, and music of Jacques Offenbach, and then also some 20th century masters of, of French <coughs> chanson, Jacques Brel and Edith Piaf. Um, but I guess we should start off by talking about the idea that none of this was written for two violas. So where did you find the music? Are these arrangements that you, you picked up or did you do them yourselves? Um, some of them come from different sources. Uh, some of them I arranged like a while ago uh, when I did gigs in Quebec, those were especially in Chanson Française, uh, it was asked about at weddings and parties and my family asked for them <laughs> all the time. So something to have on hand. And uh, yeah, Eddie's has uh, that connection, that connection, but she found that great uh, website, Absolute, Absolute Zero Viola. Uh, there are a couple, I think, is that what they are? Um, and they write for two violas. So they arrange things mm. for two violas and some of the more classical things we found from, from that website. So yeah, it's a it's like half research, half arranging, trying to find things that fits. Fit and I think, and I, think what's, I think what's really exciting here is that um, a lot of these are going to be familiar tunes to people, right? They're gonna know what these songs are. Yeah, actually we um, started doing those duos um, back last summer and we played in nursing homes outside, the French nursing homes, you know, in Saint Boniface and like that. And yeah, that's something that we we thought about, like what, what are we gonna play? And most of those tunes came to mind because you know, both of our family families, they're not really classical nerds like us, but they do ask for, you know, those popular tunes or popular classic like Barcaro that's super known and yeah and that's something that after playing for nursing homes you know people were so happy to hear those things because they, they recognize them and they can sort of whistle or sing with us at the same time and yeah that's kind of a connection to our community too. Yeah how wonderful. Um, Elise I also noticed that there's some Astor Piazzolla on there and I know you know his music intimately well you've become a a tango professional here in town. Um, but he, he's also a composer that has a French connection, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he studied with Nadia Boulanger. Uh, and he was actually offered a grant from the French government, you know, come here uh, to, uh, to uh, get a little bit more of the, the palette in your, in your writing, in your color. Um, yeah, I, we both felt like there was a, a strong connection between the tango and French music. Carlos Gardel, who's actually a main, main traditional tango guy, uh, was French. His name was Charles, um, Charles Romuald Gardès, and he immigrated with his mother and they changed names so it, it fit more the place. So we definitely felt like uh, there was a a likeness and a connection just in, in the soul, something with the French music and the, the tango music. Well, it sounds like you put together just a, a very beautiful show. And uh, again, just such a unique experience to have two violists on the stage um, sharing that sound. And, and like you say, just so close to the human voice. And I think that also what helps to to resonate with with listeners is that it, it hits so close to home because it's it's in their register and it's it's very um, the connection is just so tight there. So I, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to to chat with me at, at Classic 107 today. Thank, thank you. you. Now, as part of the In Perfect Harmony series, Marie-Elise Badeau and Elise Lavallée perform online free of charge. The concert available as of today, April 26th. For more details, you can visit classic107.com under the events tab or whensector.com. 